Good morning, everyone. It's Monday. No, it's not. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, June 30th. I'm Stephanie Haney. This is 3 News Now. Welcome back. This is where we bring you the top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you so much for joining us. We're starting off today with big national news as the United States Supreme Court continues to publish its decisions over the past several days and the coming days. We have a new decision today that makes it easier for religious schools to get state aid. This is in a five to four ruling with the conservatives in the majority. It's now just a little bit easier for religious schools to obtain public funding. This is based on a case out of Montana where the justices today upheld a scholarship program that allows state tax credits for public schooling. So this came out of a dispute over a Montana scholarship program for private education grades K through 12 that also made donors eligible for up to $150 in state tax credits. In Montana, the state's highest court had struck down the tax credit. They said it was a violation of the Montana's Constitution's ban on state aid to religious schools. The scholarships could be used both at religious and non-religious schools, but in reality, almost all of the recipients had children who attended religious schools. Writing the opinion for the majority, Chief Justice John Roberts said that the state ruling violates the religious freedom of parents who want the scholarships to help pay for their children's private education. He wrote, A state need not subsidize private education, but once a state decides to do so, it cannot disqualify some private schools solely because they are religious. In other big news today, we are honoring the life of legendary comedian and Dick Van Dyke show creator Carl Reiner, who has passed away. Reiner's assistant confirmed to Variety that the comedian passed away of natural causes on Monday night. This was at his home in Beverly Hills, California. TMZ, which was the first to report Reiner's passing, said his family was with him at the time. Reiner was an absolute icon in the entertainment industry. He was an award-winning actor, producer, writer, and director. Most people know him best for creating and appearing in The Dick Van Dyke Show, but he has more than 400 credits to his name for his decades-long career in the entertainment industry. Some of his most popular movies that you might remember that he directed, including The Jerk with Steve Martin and All of Me with Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin. Also, very recently, Reiner voiced the character of Carl Rhinoceros on Toy Story 4. He also did voice work for shows like Family Guy, American Dad, and Bob's Burgers. Just three days before he died, he tweeted that nothing pleased him more than knowing he has lived the best possible life by having met and married his wife, Estelle, or Stella, who partnered with him in bringing Rob, Annie, and Lucas Reiner into this needy and evolving world those were his tweets our thoughts are absolutely with his family and loved ones during this time reiner absolutely lived an incredible life and we're thinking of everyone who was close to him and is mourning that loss today here in ohio in the unscheduled press conference yesterday governor mike dewine said that masks are a symbol of freedom he said that because if you wear these, if we get to 75 to 80 percent of the people who are out in public who are wearing a mask, we're going to see numbers get better. Of course, he's talking about COVID-19 coronavirus numbers here in the state of Ohio. Now, here in Ohio, we do not have a mask mandate in place. DeWine had started out with that, but he quickly backtracked from that before making it official and said that only employees in public spaces would be required to wear masks, though people are strongly encouraged to do so. It is still only suggested that Ohioans wear a mask at this time when out in public. Yesterday, Governor Mike DeWine talked about seven metrics that health experts are monitoring, and he did not go into detail, but he said that he will go into detail on those metrics during his Thursday press conference at 2 p.m., and those will be the things that we use to see what Ohio is going to do from here after this recent spike in COVID-19 cases. He mentioned Montgomery County specifically, which apparently measures highly on four out of these seven metrics. He also measured Hamilton County at five out of the seven metrics as showing up as high on whatever these metrics are, which again, we'll learn more about them on Thursday. And he said that's when an alert sort of goes up. That's when a warning goes up. And that's why we're talking very specifically about those two counties right now in terms of the response to COVID-19 as we're seeing it right now. He also said that he doesn't like what we're seeing in Cuyahoga County here in Northeast Ohio, but we're not yet at a stage of a 
high alert, so to speak, according to the health people who are looking at this data every single day. Now, Monday's newly reported coronavirus cases were slightly lower than Sunday, but the increases are still above the state's 21-day average. But that average is going up because that's how numbers work. When we have big numbers like that 987 new cases, when we have big numbers like we saw yesterday with the 737 new cases, that's going to pull the average up. Right now, just so you know, when we take a look at our COVID-19 numbers, the 21-day average for new daily reported cases is 581. We started the month of June with a daily average of 325 for the past 21 days. So that's a significant increase. Let's take a look at where those numbers stand right now. Our total number of COVID-19 cases confirmed dating all the way back to March 9th when we first learned about it being in Ohio. And again, of course, we do have evidence that it actually occurred in Ohio as early as January based as antibody testing. But the numbers that we have date back to March 9th. There are now a total of 51,046 coronavirus cases here in the state of Ohio. Again, as I said yesterday, we saw 737 new cases reported. That was actually down from what we saw on Sunday when we saw 854 new cases reported. On Friday, we saw 987 new cases reported, and that's the biggest increase that we've seen since April 20th. So those numbers are definitely up there. It was not that long ago, just a couple weeks ago, when we were talking about daily reported numbers in the 300s and the 400s. We haven't seen numbers that low in a little bit of time here now. When we talk about the new deaths that were reported yesterday, there were 11 new deaths reported yesterday. Now keep in mind, this is a lagging indicator as we become aware of new cases. It is definitely a lagging indicator to see how severe those cases are and which of those cases will ultimately result in fatalities from COVID-19. The total number of deaths in the state of Ohio is now 2,818. The total number of hospitalizations dating back to March 9th is 7,746. We saw 65 new hospitalizations yesterday. That's up from 57 new hospitalizations reported on Sunday. The total number of ICU admissions is now 1,961. This was down a little bit. We saw 15 new ICU admissions reported yesterday, down from 30 new ICU admissions reported on Sunday. In more COVID-19 news, Tony's Family Restaurant in Palma is, Parma is temporarily closing after an employee tested positive for COVID-19. The restaurant posted about this on Facebook on Monday. They said the infection of the staff member was traced to a source outside of the restaurant, but they will be closing for two full weeks to ensure the safety of staff and customers. During this period, the restaurant says that every surface will be cleaned and re-sanitized. Again, this is at Tony's Family Restaurant in Parma. The restaurant, which is on West Pleasant Valley Road, that's near the Broadview Road intersection in Parma, right by the Acme Grocery Store. They posted also on Facebook that the person is doing fine and doesn't have any of the classic symptoms associated with COVID-19. They believe the person only worked on Saturday after becoming infected. They also said that that person was required to wear a mask all day and that every precaution has been being taken there anyway when people come in contact with all services and those Precautions were taken on Saturday. Another Northeast Ohio restaurant, Yours Truly in Valleview, closed earlier this month after confirming an employee tested positive for COVID-19 on June 20th. So it's nice to see these restaurants taking every precaution when they do realize there has been a COVID-19 case among their staff. And from all signs, we believe that Tony's Family Restaurant will reopen. The plan is for them to close for two weeks and then to reopen after that. Regal Cinemas, are planning to reopen. They were planning to do it soon, but they're actually pushing that back now, three weeks until July 31st. When they do reopen, like in many places, there will be lots of changes. Some of those changes include new contactless payment options for tickets and your snacks. They're also going to have these very fancy ULV foggers that will be used to sanitize every theater after every movie. I have to be honest with you. As somebody who doesn't really like germs, Kind of wish these UL foggers had been around for a long time and maybe that'll be something that can stick around even after COVID-19 is gone and done with here in the U.S. The Regal official said on their site that this is a form of deep sanitation that's highly effective in disinfecting all materials with a non-toxic non formula that is fast drying. That sounds pretty good. 
The lobby, if you're in the lobby, you will be required to wear a mask while you're in the lobby and in hallways and in restrooms, but you can remove them once you're inside the theater so that you can eat and drink your snacks that you bring into the theater that you purchase there. Guests will be encouraged to get to the movie theater as quickly as possible and exit the theater as quickly as possible. They're also going to have wall-mounted sanitizer dispensers on either side of the main entrance. So you can sanitize your hands when you arrive, you can sanitize your hands when you leave. Now when it comes to the concession stand, there will be a reduced menu at Regal Theaters temporarily, and those self-service condiment stands will not be available, so you're not going to be going over there pumping your own extra butter on your popcorn. They're going to have to do that for you. And if you're one of those people, like my family, who's used to getting a big large popcorn and passing it among everybody because you get a bunch of refills, that's not gonna happen. There will be no refills on large drinks and no refills on popcorns to keep everyone safe at the cinema. Once you are in the movie theater, where it's required by state or county mandate, the theater capacity will be reduced to 50%, so half the people. And there will be two empty seats between groups, unless you're at one of those very fancy movie theaters that has the big recliner, then there will be one seat between groups. That's so people can maintain that proper distancing. These are at places where you select your seat when you get your ticket. Now at places where you don't select your seat, where there is not reserved seating, you will be requested to leave two seats between groups. Group sizes will only be limited where required by state or county mandate. So these changes will be taking effect as soon as those theaters reopen on July 31st. Again, this is a three-week delay from when they had hoped to reopen, but the new plan now is for Regal Cinemas to open on July 31st. Something that's opening today is the Cleveland Museum of Art. And here's something new. You need a ticket to get in. Now the tickets are free. But they have to be reserved in advance before visiting the museum and officials say that they will be limited to eight people per ticket reservation. This is the first phase of the Cleveland Museum of Arts reopening and there will be a maximum of 500 visitors per day. So these tickets are going to be available in 15 minute intervals and the last ticket reservation for every day will be at 3.30 p.m. For the safety and security of museum visitors and the staff, you have to register every guest in your party when you're reserving your tickets, and then museum staff will match the registered names with the tickets upon entry. So one person can register up to eight people, but you have to have the names of those people. Upon arrival, guests will have their temperature checked, and several amenities will be closed. There will be no coat checks, there will be no restaurant, no cafe, no water fountains, no museum store, the Art Lounge Gallery is not open, and the Ingalls Library is not open right now at the Cleveland Museum of Art. According to their reopening guide, everyone will also be required to wear a mask covering that covers your mouth and nose while inside the building. If you have a medical condition that prevents you from wearing a mask, you need to call ahead that number is 216-421-7350. Again, that number is 216-421-7350. So during this first phase of the Cleveland Museum of Arts reopening, the hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's Tuesday through Sunday. And remember, the last reservation is for 3.30 p.m. And you can get those reservations in 15-minute increments. The museum is closed on Monday. That's it for your 3 News Now early update for Tuesday not Monday, June 30th. I'll be back here at 2 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health to let you know what it's looking like right now with COVID-19 here in the state of Ohio, as well as more top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app, which if you don't have it, you can download in the App Store on an iOS device or in the Google Play Store on an Android device. Android device. I'm Stephanie Haney. I'll see you back here in a little bit.